Coming up on CMI, Ozzy Guillen has earned fame for winning the World Series and infamy for speaking his mind. Now, the White Sox manager joins Chris Myers and reveals why you should never get on his bad side. you got to force guys to do things, otherwise you run them out of town, right? I, I do. Mean, uh, <laughs> right, you have, right. I'm the nicest guy to play for, right. but I'm the meanest side of a god to play for. Guillen also sounds off on prima donna players, explains who'll get his vote as the American League's most valuable player, and admits if he's really a changed man these days. Those uh, sensitivity uh, training courses, uh, how'd, how'd that turn out? Find out what makes Ozzie Guillen the most outspoken personality in baseball, right now on CMI, the Chris Myers interview. Welcome to the program, and it's uh, nice to be uh, talking to Ozzy uh, Kian. Uh, World Series, what, what's so different for you after winning the World Series? You seem like the same guy. <laughs> well, you have to. I think you have to handle yourself the way people think. I, I think I always take one day at a time. No matter what happened yesterday, it's me, anything today. And a lot of people thought I was going to be robbing people's face. I won the World Champs. Uh, people thought I would be celebrating every day in my life. And, you know, I mean, I think I get paid to win. Right. Um, we win because the, my ball club was good, not because me. And it's one thing about it, it's just whatever, you know, we was, I told my team, you was 2005 world champ, you're not the 2006. And we had to, you know, stay stuff real low key and, and right. play the game like we know win anything. Was it hard to keep the guys hungry after winning a World Series? <laughs> well, not really because... When you taste it the first time, you want to continue to taste it. And then we had a couple of guys here, you know, Jim Tommy, Makoviak, Sintrom, um, Val Vasquez, a couple of guys now was with us last year. They want to taste a little bit of that. And I think uh, like every day is going to be a competition. We know we're going to be a target because, uh, because we did it last year. I know right now it seems like a far off in the distance, but take us back for a moment, uh, the emotion when you did win the World Series, when it when it did happen, what you reflect on about that, or how often maybe you, you think about that. Do you have time to, to think about that? Well, and just celebrate beyond just that moment? I, I just, the first thing I think, I think God to the, give me opportunity, it was me to run the ball club as you know, as you run the Chicago White Sox. It's not what somebody out because I always want to do it with this ball club. I remember hugging my kids. To me, that's the more important thing in my life. And, and after that, I was thinking about Jerry Reinser. Okay, you know I, mean? I think Jerry Reinser deserved that, and I think he worked so hard to doing that. And, and the fans, you know, the fans in Chicago, they've been, waiting, they've been <laughs> waiting for so long. And I was thank God just to be part, to be a little part of that, of that championship. But besides that, a lot of people think, a lot of people thought I got to be jumping on the field, I'll be celebrating with the players. I'll be running around. I just, I just let the players celebrate, and, and, and I feel, I would feel proud to see my players go in the field and, and, and feel that that was feeling that night. Yeah, and you said shortly after that, and I don't know if it was misquoted or you, that maybe you wouldn't be so ha so sure that you would return as manager of the White Sox. Was that just a slip of the tongue? Were you really thinking about not? Because obviously you're back for more. Well, it's one thing about that. In that particular moment, when I say that, we were struggle. Okay. And I was like the fans in Chicago and the people in baseball, my biggest goal, it's not my biggest dream because no. I never dream, I put goals. Okay. And my biggest goal is to win the World Series with the Chicago White Sox. And I say, if we win it, I can go on and done with baseball. Right. Because okay. all my satisfaction needs to be over. Then uh, this, is why, this is why I try to say, it's, it's one thing about people always try to take advantage. I come here to win games. I'm not come here to, to be a, a movie star, rocket star, like, oh, this guy, this guy who bring us to the World Series, I don't bring anybody to the World Series. I think I was a pretty small part of that ball club, and I think, I think the players deserve all the credit. Do, do, do you think you would be the kind of manager uh, that, that you were before you became a manager? In other words, it, it, or did you think about, well, I'm going to do this, I'm going to act this way, and then did you act differently? No, I can't, yeah. because I, I'm not a hypocrite person. <laughs> it's I acting different, I think I'm lying to myself. It's, it's one thing about myself, it's just, I got to be who I am. I got to be the way I grew up. I got to be the way I, uh, I stay in, ba in baseball. When you're a manager, you just have a title. Mm -hmm. You're running a ball club. You're running uh, an organization. You're the face of the organization. But that means you're not going to change. You got to be the same guy because sometimes when you're a manager, you say, please, 
a lot of people, it's one thing you not have to please, is your players, because right. that's the one who's going to do it for you. But you got to be, uh, and you were a player, of course, you got to be tough sometimes. You got to make tough decisions, right? You got to be a, a mean, to, not a mean is the right word, but you got to force guys to do things, otherwise you run them out of town, right? I, I do. Mean, uh, <laughs> right, you have, right. You and know that's, why? Because if I go to, I go to, I have to have the right guys with the right attitude in my ball club. I don't want anybody bigger in the game. I don't want anybody think it's better and they're not the rest of the guys. Uh, I don't have too many rules in the game. I have a couple of rules and I expect them right. to go by my rules. I'm the nicest guy to play for, right. but I'm the meanest side of a god to play <laughs> for because I, the expectation from me to my players is high. Right. And I want my players to play, you know, play every day with that expectation to win. Obviously, that's not going to happen every day, but I want the best out of my players. Well, you're kind of, you're, you're a young guy, but you're kind of old school, right? And uh, do the young guys today understand that, relate to that, or do you care? I think old school sound like, wow. Well, no, I think baseball changed. Okay. Or the new players or the kids change because we let them change. It's our fault right. to let those kids do whatever they want to do, and they think they, they are bigger in the game, they think they... Did the shot because the first round, second round pick, I made that much money. I only 17 years I made it to the big league. Well, I went through that. Right. I went through I was a kid, and I grew up in the good people. I grew up with professional. Right. And I think when I see one of my players, especially when they're kids, do what they're not supposed to do and be the one, the first one to jump on it. Right. But in the meanwhile, I'll be the first supporter they have. And I think, like I say, it's not baseball for it's the people running this game. Let those kids do whatever they want to do, and we have to close their eyes and acting like we're deaf, mute, and, and, and blind. And you can do that because all the song we got to lose the game, and people got to do whatever they want to do in the game. So you have the power, though. You're not worried about some superstar player who's making a lot of money, who the fans like and the owners like, being more important to the team than you. I ain't going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> or you, or you, don't want, you don't want to be a part of that. I, I know what to happen because you, should, you set the tone from spring training for the first day. I will trip. Jim Tommy, Paul Conerco, Dai, Garcia, because we got some kind of guys that make pretty good money here. Yeah. I will treat him the same way I will treat Ozuna, Sintron, because the only difference between those two guys, three guys, if every 15 day they had the paycheck. All right, we'll continue with Ozzy again. Talk about uh, when he was a 16 year old uh, coming up, couldn't speak English, playing baseball. I'll continue here <laughs> on CMI in a moment. Also coming up. Is it okay for you to tell your pitcher to throw at their guy? Oh, of course. Whoever managing this right. game, throw one time. If somebody get hit, you're going to hit somebody. Plus. Now, do you, do you have to be more careful about what you say? I'm not going to change. I, yeah. I think I have to be who I am, and it's one thing about it. You learn from mistakes. That's next on the Chris Myers interview with Ozzie Guillen. Welcome back to the Chris Myers interview with Ozzie Guillen. Uh oh, there he goes. Ozzie Guillen has been thrown out of the game. Well, you knew he wasn't going to be in the game long. I'm not sure either one of them hears what the other guy's saying. We're talking with Ozzie Guillen of the White Sox. Oh, by the way, those uh, sensitivity uh, training courses, uh, how, how'd that turn out? <laughs> Well, I don't think I need those classes. I need an English class. You know, it's if, one thing about it, you learn a lot. You learn a lot, but it's, it's a funny thing because... So you didn't have to go, by the way. I did. did. Oh, you I did, did go? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah but I have to. That's why uh, commissioner right. want me to do it. I did it because it's good for baseball. Okay. Good for myself. And it's one thing about it that people what thought, I don't know the rules and what you can say in the country, what you cannot say in this country. Well, it's not. I've been here, uh, this, I'm 42 years old. Right. Um, I... I got here when I was 16. Right. That means I know real well what you can say and you, what you cannot say. And, you know, I think it was, it was one thing about when you get tired of people talk about you with no reason. Then I come out with a word I regretted to say right. it. I might say something different, but you know. Uh, I, I thought it was interesting, by the way, excuse me for interrupting, it was a homosexual reference to a particular writer that you apologized to those in the gay community, but to the writer, you didn't want to apologize and you still won't because he's a guy you don't really respect. Oh, well, I don't respect him because he don't respect me. Right. Oh, he don't respect a lot of people. And it's one thing about it, you know me, uh, I was in Chicago for a long time. Uh, 
be in the city. I hope I expect to be in the city longer than, than a lot of people think I will be. And it's one thing I know respect people when, when you want to talk to me and you want to know who I am and you want to know what I do, just show up right. and be, you know, to see what's going on. You know, I got a lot of people say the Chicago media protect me. Well, I get in trouble a couple of times right. and it comes from the Chicago media. Right. You know, come from another media. Then I say, <laughs> right. how they protect right. me when they come from them. It's one thing about Chicago media and Nazi Guillen. The people we meet every day, right. they know I never go to lie to them. Right. They go to have the information they need to know. Right. Because sooner or later, they go to know the truth and they go to give me. I was just telling the truth from the go get and, and deal with. And, and so because of that, uh, was, it, was it embarrassing for you, Ozzy, or did you, I mean, did the White Sox, uh, you, you said the commissioner stepped in that, over that incident, did they say to you, hey, you know, you're a great manager, we love you here, but you, you got to watch these things or we're going to have a big problem? Well, no, because they know the way I say it, why I say it, mm -hmm. and I don't say the property thing. That's the main, the main thing. Right. Yes, I think it was, it was a little embarrassing to see me on the TV every day talking about something we don't have to. Right. Uh, see my play, I think... The most embarrassing thing is seeing my players deal with that in the clubhouse every day, look at his manager, and respond to questions every day about me. You know, they're not asking about the game. They're not asking about how you feel about you playing for Ozzy. They all ask about what you think about what Ozzy say. That, that's <laughs> embarrassing, and that's, I regret to put my players in that position that week. But I, I think that's what people like about you is that you are candid and you are honest, right? You're, you're pretty much straightforward with your feelings. So now, do you, do you have to be more careful about what you say when you're Well, talking? you talk about different things you're not supposed to say in, in our country. Right. Uh, I will be. But is I going to be honest? And I'm, going to, I'm not going to step, I'm not going to st uh, let anybody step in my throat. Okay. Uh, I think the, the bad thing about when you lying and when you're hiding and you say no comment, when you don't say no comment, to me you say you have something hiding, you don't want to say it. <laughs> right. That's what I say. I say I say what I have to say and I do what I have to do. And, and you know, obviously this game changed a lot right. about, I don't go to say politics, I just say about the respect That's to the right. fans. And, 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 and I get caught in a couple of stuff, I, I should, but I'm not going to change. I, yeah. I think I have to be who I am and it's one thing about it, you learn from mistakes. And I learned from my mistakes. And, and, and it hasn't been just that. There have been a few other instances involving the, one, for example, which is part of the game, uh, telling a pitcher to throw at a hitter or retaliation if one of your guys mm -hmm. gets thrown at. Uh, clear that up for me in a, in a statement or two. You talk about when you played and now. What's the code in baseball? What, what's right when your guy gets thrown at? Is it okay for you to tell your pitcher to throw at their guy? Oh, of course. That's okay. But you don't say public. Right. You know, okay. you don't say in the public. <laughs> we just did, but well, that's okay. Well, everybody does. You're right. <laughs> everybody does. Whoever managing baseball, whoever managing this right. game, told one time, if somebody get hit, you go to hit somebody. The thing is, was, we don't hit the guy. And right. I got a little upset okay. about it. And so, they asked me about it. I said, yeah, why? Because I had to protect my player. Oh, they son, a good thing for baseball. They, they have a meeting with me and talk to me about right. it. I said, because legally, by the law of the United States, if somebody get hit, and you say that in public, you can get sued. Oh, I didn't realize. Yes, yeah, well, that's my agent telling me. Oh, okay. Because the kids get hit, and all the song couldn't play anymore. I said, you told this, you demand this guy yeah. to hit this guy, you okay. can't be in trouble. That's only different. But believe me, if people write about it, right. say it. They all, the, the different is they say it different way. Right. You know what I mean? But uh, of but, course, I, I think when I just would go to protect my players. And I protect the wrong way because you protect them real quiet. You know, go in, in the radio and, and, and I was so upset. I went to the paper and said, yeah, for score, I, I say it. Right. And, and so are, are hitters today a little too sensitive about when they get a brushback pitch or do they have a right to be concerned because a career could be threatened if a guy is hit at the plate in the wrong spot? Well, right now, I remember, you know, you hit me, I'm going to hit you. Right. That's just how it I got a slide in second base, the hardest I can, and hopefully I'll get you hurt. Now you can't. You know okay. what I mean? This game changed a little bit about protecting players' life, family. And I agree with that. Okay. And I agree. I totally agree with that. But the thing I not agree is when somebody hits you and you know, I'll say, I'll say, oh, wait a, wait a minute. This man, I can hear somebody. How about this guy hurt one of my players? Right. That means, what's the difference? What's the difference? What's the right? And that's why the, the, the only difference and the only right is you say quietly and you're not going in, in the media and say it. That's the only difference. Uh, speaking of players, this year, uh, MVP, who would be your MVP uh, for the league? I'm, I'm not saying this because play for me. Right. I don't because I'm not a hypocrite. I know a little bit about baseball. 
I think if you see JD die playing every day, you will appreciate what he does for the ball club. It's one thing about it. When you got the NY right. and the B yeah. in your hat, I think the publicity. All right, but come on, Derek Jeter's had a great year, right? I mean, no better, no yeah. better than my kid. No? Well, Honestly, look, at, look at the RBIs. Okay. Look at the, 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 the game-winning RBIs. Okay. Look at how many tie games he have. Uh, look at uh, home runs. Right. Well, Derek Jeter had a great <laughs> average. Well, my he, he hit 330 right now. You know what I mean? Okay. And, 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 you know, look, at, look around Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter is not the, is the man right. with the New York Yankees, but it's not the guy who had to produce day to win. During that, you know, JD, Jermaine, you got to do it because we need him. Right. Uh, should a DH, can a DH win the MVP award or would you feel if funny? The no, if the numbers is better and bigger than another one, of yeah. course, because okay. Okay. it's part of the team. How about a pitcher? Would you give a pitcher an MVP or you just say the Cy Young? Well, uh, no, I think Cy Young should take it. It's one, one reason why. Play had to go every day. Right. They had to prepare themselves every day. That's your a MVP. pitcher, they had to, you know, every five days they had to recover, they study, they, they right. had time to, to, to get back in the bases. And, and I think every day players, it's, 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 it's a dogfight all year long. All right, we'll continue with uh, Ozzy Guillen here in just a moment. Don't go away. Also coming up. I hate when people make an excuse like I was a mother, I was doing drugs, I was doing this thing back because my mom and my dad got divorced. Well, try to get better. Plus, if you don't come back and win the World Series, is it a failure? Stick around for the answer next on the Chris Myers interview with Ozzy Guillen. Coming up next on the Chris Myers interview, Ozzy Guillen reveals what it's like growing up on the mean streets of Caracas, Venezuela. Bill Gates. Okay. Nothing about Bill Gates because I even know the man. Right. I just put a sample. I said, you put this man in the middle of my city by himself, he will something doing something in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> also on the way. How much longer do you think you want to manage? Get the answer next on the Chris Myers interview with Ozzy Guillen. You're watching the Chris Myers interview with Ozzie Guillen. Tying run at second, two out. Palmero over the head of Jenks. Uribe charges, throws, out! And the White Sox have won the World Series. And Ozzie Guillen is a world champion manager at 41 years old. We're back with, uh, with Ozzie Guillen. So uh, at age 16, you come to, right, America playing ball. You don't speak English. Uh, and I've heard you say that, you know, you could go to Harvard and you'd survive. You'd be okay. But if you took a Harvard guy and dropped him in Caracas, Venezuela, he might not be able to handle it. No, I don't say Harvard. I say <laughs> Mr. Uh, what's the guy, the computer guy? Uh, Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Okay. The difference is I can talk about life because I grew up in the street. Right. And I run in a ball club without education. Uh, I still learn English, you know, my English, is, 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 my kids are always making fun of my English. But when you never go to school, you only got, you know, eighth grade, and all of a sudden you, you, you're smart enough to survive. And you go to Caracas. You, I go to Harvard, and somebody asks me about life, I will get a microphone and talk from people and right. say, you know, what's life me, in my opinion. Right. And when you bring my, you know, nothing about Bill Gates because I even know the man, right. I just put a sample. I say, you put this man in the middle of my city by himself. He will something doing something in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see? You've already learned with sensitive training. That's good. I can say that yeah. national TV. That's good. We could we could do that. So so in in that scenario, why? How did you make it? it? I know there's probably a long story, but people are watching. Maybe people who've had a rough life or in a rough situation. Why didn't you uh, go off the wrong way? How how did you stay? Did baseball save you? Yes, it did. And my family, because uh, one time, you know, I always. I hate when people make an excuse like I was a mother, I was doing drugs, I was doing this thing bad because my mom and my dad got divorced. Well, try to get better. Right. That's what I did. I tried to get better, try to go out. I was growing up. Uh, baseball gave me the opportunity. 
I remember one time I, I told the guy, I said, you know, when you get here, you get homesick. Right. Because I was only 16. I said, well, you know what? You get homesick, you're not going to be a baseball player. Because that's the only thing I have in my life, and I'm going to grab it. I'm going to make the best out of it. And thank God I did. I think God gave me the ability and gave me opportunities to be in the right place in the right time and be where I am right now. And, and so obviously you relate to players well in that way. They see that from you, that street smart. They respect that, uh, they, right? They, they well, if you talk to... about baseball with me, you better sit down yeah. and talk about baseball. <laughs> okay. You talk about life with me. I have one of my players, I'm not gonna say the name. He got a problem. Right. And I told him, see, you're not strong enough to resolve your problems. You're not strong enough to be in the field. Oh, really? Wow. And, 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 you know, my players talk to me a lot. My players but they talk to you about life. As about well life more than baseball. You know, I talk to, I see when my players talk about everything. Mm -hmm. You know me about, because everybody have family problems. Right. Uh, everybody have a problem with their parents. Everybody have a problem with this. You know, some people like to drink. Some people don't. You know I mean? It's just, people, you have to remember, baseball players, they're human beings. Right. People, every time they see a ball player, the only thing they see is money. Right. Well, it's, <laughs> it's not about money. It's a lot of time. Players spend more time without the family. We do a lot of stuff people don't, they don't know about it. So do you take as much pride in winning games uh, with players as, I don't know, being either a big brother or a father image to some ball players when you see them have success love, in their lives? I love my players have success. I love it. I love it. I, I, I tell my players, my biggest thrill besides winning is when you're done with this game, you sit in your house well done with your family, and one day say, wow, thank you to the crazy man. Talk, talk to me about life and about baseball. Look at who I am right now. Because I always appreciate my friends, Harold Baines, Tom Seaver, Carton Fisk. I grew up with those guys. All the way. And I think that's why I appreciate the game more than a lot of people because I grew up with the, with the right people around me. Uh, back to baseball. If you don't come back and win the World Series, is it a failure? Yes. This year? Really? Yes. Okay. Why? Because I'm a winner. They give me a ball club to, to compete. And besides that, second place, the first loser. All right. And uh, we have to win it. And how much longer do you think you want to manage? One day uh, for one week. Another day I want to manage it for the rest of my life. But I love Bobby Cox. I love it to right. death. And uh, I, wish God, I, I, I wish God gave me the opportunity to, to manage it the long he did and, and, and Joe Torres. I want to be remembered like those guys being remembered in baseball. All right, well, it's always great talking to you. Good luck, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, thank appreciate you. It. Anytime. All right, Ozzy Guillen with us on CMI. We thank you for being here. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Tune in next week when Chris sits down with Trent Green. The Chiefs QB explains what it's like to be a graduate of the School of Hard Knocks and reveals if Herm Edwards can lead KC to the Super Bowl. That's on the next episode of CMI, the Chris Myers interview. You're watching the Chris Myers interview with Ozzie Guillen. Tying run at second, two out. Palmero over the head of Jenks. Uribe charges, throws out, and the White Sox have won the World Series. And Ozzie Guillen is a world champion manager at 41 years old. We're back with uh, with Ozzie Guillen. So uh, at age 16, you come to right America playing ball. You don't speak English, uh, and I've heard you say that you know you could go to Harvard and you'd survive. You'd be okay. But if you took a Harvard guy and dropped him in Caracas, Venezuela, he might not be able to handle it. No, I don't say Harvard. I say <laughs> Mr. Uh, what's the guy, the computer guy? Uh, Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Okay. The difference is I can talk about life because I grew up in the street, right? And I run in a ball club without education. Uh, I still learn English, you know, my English, is, 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 my kids are always making fun of my English. But when you never go to school, you only got, you know, eight grades, and all of a sudden you, you, you're smart enough to survive. And you go to Caracas. You, I go to Harvard, and somebody asks me about life, I will get a microphone and talk from people and right. say, you know, what's life me, in my opinion. Right. And when you bring my, you know, nothing about Bill Gates because I even know the man, right. I just put a sample. I say, you put this man in the middle of my city by himself, he will something doing something in his pants. <laughs>
<laughs> do you see you've already learned with sensitive training? That's good. I can say that yeah. national TV. That's good. We could we could do that. So so in in that scenario, why how did you make it? it I know there's probably a long story, but people are watching. Maybe people who've had a rough life or in a rough situation. Why didn't you uh, go off the wrong way? How, how did you stay? Did baseball save you? Yes, it did. And my family, because uh, one time, you know, I always, I hate when people make an excuse like I was a mother, I was doing drugs, I was doing this thing bad because my mom and my dad got divorced. Well, I tried to get better. Right. That's what I did. Yeah. I tried to get better, try to go out. I was growing up. Uh, baseball gave me the opportunity. I remember one time I told the guy, I said, you know, when you get here, you get homesick. Right. Because I was only 16. I said, well, you know what? You get homesick, you're not going to be a baseball player. Because that's the only thing I have in my life, and I'm going to grab it. I'm going to make the best out of it. And thank God I did. I think God gave me the ability and gave me the opportunity to be in the right place in the right time and be where I am right now. And, that, and so obviously you relate to players well in that way. They see that from you, that street smart. They respect that, uh, they, right? They, they well, if you talk to... about baseball with me, you better sit down yeah. and talk about baseball. <laughs> okay. You talk about life with me. I have one of my players, I'm not gonna say the name. He got a problem. Right. And I told him, see, you're not strong enough to resolve your problems. You're not as strong enough to be in the field. Oh, really? Wow. And, 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 you know, my players talk to me a lot. My players but they talk to you about life. As about well life more than baseball. You know, I talk to, I see when my players talk about everything. Mm -hmm. You know me about, because everybody have family problems. Right. Uh, everybody have a problem with their parents. Everybody have a problem with this, you know, some people like to drink, some people don't. You know I mean? It's just, people, you have to remember, baseball players, they're human beings. Right. People, every time they see a ball player, the only thing they see is money. Right. Well, it's, <laughs> it's not about money. It's a lot of time. Players spend more time without the family. We do a lot of stuff people don't, they don't know about it. So do you take as much pride in winning games uh, with players as, I don't know, being either a big brother or a father image to some ball players when you see them have success love, in their lives? I love my players have success. I love it. I love it. I, I, I tell my players, my biggest thrill besides winning is when you're done with this game, you sit in your house well done with your family, and one day say, wow, thank you to the crazy man. Talk, talk to me about life and about baseball. Look at who I am right now. Because I always appreciate my friends, Harold Baines, Tom Seaver, Carton Fisk. I grew up with those guys. All the way. And I think that's why I appreciate the game more than a lot of people because I grew up with the, with the right people around me. Uh, back to baseball. If you don't come back and win the World Series, is it a failure? Yes. This year? Really? Yes. Okay. Why? Because I'm a winner. They give me a ball club to, to compete. And besides that, second place, the first loser. All right. And uh, we have to win it. And how much longer do you think you want to manage? One day uh, for one week. Another day I want to manage it for the rest of my life. But I love Bobby Cox. I love it to right. death. And uh, I, wish God, uh, I, I, I wish God gave me the opportunity to, to manage it the longer he did and, and, and Joe Torres. I want to be remembered like those guys being remembered in baseball. All right, well, it's always great talking to you. Good luck, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, thank appreciate you. It. Anytime. All right, Ozzy again with us on CMI. We thank you for being here. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Watch bonus footage of this interview at foxsports.com on MSN. That's where you can stream video clips from past shows and watch previews of upcoming guests. It's only at foxsports.com on MSN. Keyword CMI.